In this third video, we are going to use integration by parts multiple times where it might seem like we're going in circles, but we're going to see how we can resolve it. In the first two videos demonstrating the use of integration by parts, we showed how the technique can be used to obtain integrals which can be more easily evaluated since they take one of the basic integral forms. In some cases, however, when evaluating an integral using integration by parts, we encounter repeated applications of the technique and we return to a variation of the integral with which we began. Initially, it might seem that we're going in circles, but this actually can help us evaluate the integral. Suppose we're asked to evaluate the integral of cosine of 3z cosine of 4z dz. Now this integral does not meet one of the basic integral forms that we know, so we'll try integration by parts. To do so, we need to make a choice for u and dv, and in this case it really doesn't matter which we let be u and which we let be dv, the rest of the integral. So let's suppose u is equal to the cosine of 3z and dv is equal to the cosine of 4z. As you know, we need to find the derivative of u. So taking the derivative of a cosine of 3z with respect to z, we get negative 3 sine of 3z. So du is equal to negative 3 sine of 3z dz. To find v, we integrate cosine of 4z, and we get v is equal to 1 fourth sine of 4z. And we put the pieces together in our formula for integration by parts. So we know that the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du and we get that the integral of cosine of 3z cosine of 4z dz is equal to the cosine of 3z times sine of 4z over 4 minus 1 fourth times the integral of sine of 4z times negative 3 sine of 3z dz. We can do a little bit of simplification on the right hand side but we will need to use integration by parts again since we do not have an integral that takes one of the basic forms. Now, as we proceed with the second application of integration by parts, we have to be careful not to choose our second u to be the most recent v. In other words, we don't want, we would not want to choose u is equal to sine of 4z and dv to be the sine of 3z. What do you think would happen if we make this incorrect choice? Well, Basically, we would undo the work we just did and get back to our original integral without going anywhere. So instead, we will continue with, and we're not going to call it u, we'll, we'll call it a different variable. We'll let w be sine of 3z, and we'll let dy equal the sine of 4z, or a multiple, or a multiple of those. So let's let w equal sine of 3z and dy equals the sine of 4z dz. Taking the derivative of sine of 3z with respect to z, we get the derivative of w or dw is equal to 3 cosine of 3z dz. y will be the integral of sine of 4z dz or negative 1 fourth cosine of 4z. Using integration by parts with the second integral, know that we're going to keep this first part of the integral and we'll keep the sine and the constant out in front. I'm going to use integration by parts with the second integral, knowing that the integral of w dy will equal w times y minus the integral of y dw. And I'm going to get the integral of cosine of 3z times the cosine of 4z dz is equal to that first portion 1 fourth cosine of 3z times the sine of 4z plus 3 fourths times the second application of integration by parts. Sine of 3z times negative 1 fourth cosine of 4z minus the integral of negative 1 fourth cosine of 4z times 3 cosine of 3z dz. I perform a little bit of simplification and I see that this integral on the right hand side matches the original integral. However, the integral on the right hand side has this constant out in front. So therefore, I can combine like terms and I can subtract 9 16 times the integral of cosine of 4z times the cosine of 3z dz from both sides and I get 1 minus 9 16 times the integral of cosine of 3z times the cosine of 4z dz. 
equals 1 fourth cosine of 3z times the sine of 4z minus 3 sixteenths times the sine of 3z times the cosine of 4z plus my constant. I can simplify things further. I will have 7 sixteenths times my integral on the left hand side which equals 1 fourth cosine of 3z times sine of 4z minus 3 sixteenths times the sine of 3z cosine of 4z plus my constant. I can now divide both sides by 7 sixteenths or multiply both sides by 16 sevenths and I solve for the integral I want. The integral of cosine of 3z cosine of 4z dz is equal to 4 sevenths times the cosine of 3z times the sine of 4z minus 3 sevenths times the sine of 3z times the cosine of 4z plus some other constant and notice I've changed the name because I took c1 times 16 sevenths to get another constant. And we can check is the derivative of my antiderivative equal to cosine of 3z times the cosine of 4z. And you can check that and find that it is. The integral we just evaluated is one of the forms of these trigonometric integrals. Integral of cosine of ax times cosine of bx dx, or one involving sine of ax, sine of bx, or a combination of sine and cosine. You will learn that trigonometric integrals of these types can be evaluated using identities based on angle sum formulas for sine and cosine functions or by using a table of integrals. We've shown that if you do not recall the identities nor you have access to a table of integrals, you may use integration by parts to evaluate the integrals. So therefore, integration by parts is a very valuable technique and it can be used to verify many formulas in the table of integrals. Let's recall some key ideas. Integration by parts, again, very useful technique for simplifying integrals. Make sure you know and practice this technique. Again, we're going to highlight the need to watch for the plus and minus signs and make careful use of parentheses, particularly when you have to repeat the technique. When evaluating an indefinite integral using integration by parts, make sure you include the constant to include the plus c at the end. And when applying integration by parts multiple times, as long as you do not use the resulting v as the choice for the second u, do not be alarmed if you seemingly go in circles and have the unknown integral appear on both sides of the equation. You can combine the like terms and solve for the unknown integral.